Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. In my last video I discussed the internal structure of pyramids from Egypt's 4th dynasty, how they have a stepped core structure, on top of which are placed backing stones, and on top of which are placed the fine Chora limestone casing stones. The internal structure of pyramids is rarely discussed on the internet. It is an understudied subject, but it's hugely important if you really want to understand the finer details and anomalies of the Great Pyramid. For years during the pyramid's construction, a step structure would have been all anybody ever saw. It was the first and most important phase, and the phase that would have taken the longest. The step core contains all the chambers and passages, and when this was complete the pyramid was as good as complete. Finishing the core meant you had a solid sound pyramid structure. At that stage you knew if it was structurally sound. You knew if it was a failure or a success, and from then you just needed to give it its final finish. In terms of the Great Pyramid, this was done by adding the backing stones to give the structure its true pyramid shape, and extending the King's Chamber air channels so they reach the finished pyramid edge, and then adding the casing stones. But the step core is the most important phase of work. Furthermore, it's arguably the most important thing to understand for those researching the pyramids. The stepped core explains a number of anomalies, such as why the Queen's Chamber air channels end so abruptly within the pyramid masonry. Watch my last video to learn more. It makes sense that they end at the edge of the stepped core structure, an idea presented by Lorenz van Vliet in a paper I've linked below in the description. History for Granite has explained how and why the Queen's Chamber was never finished, and the decision to leave it this way was likely made when the core was complete, when the architect and the king decided how to finish the pyramid. The decision to abandon the Queen's Chamber affected the Queen's Chamber air channels. There was no point extending them beyond the core, right to the edge of the final pyramid, because the chamber was never going to be used. Why the chamber was abandoned nobody can ever know for sure, but it could well be because the bold plan of a granite lined flat roofed king's chamber was a success. The queen's chamber is thought by many to be a contingency, and so only when the core of the pyramid, which includes all the internal chambers and passages was completed successfully, could you make the decision to abandon the queen's chamber. So, the abrupt ending of the Queen's Chamber air channels, as well as the fact they didn't even open up into the Queen's Chamber is no real mystery, but only when you consider how the pyramid was made, the fact that phase 1 was completing the stepped inner core structure. For many years Egyptologists and independent researchers including myself, have been looking at the abrupt end of the Queen's Chamber air channels without even considering the step core, and so it's no wonder many consider them to be a mystery, because we've been looking at them without all the information. A big thanks to Lawrence Van Vliet, who explains all of this in his paper linked below, as well as History for Granite and Keith Hamilton for their incredible pyramid research. Now, as a disclaimer, the rest of this video and also the video after this will be very speculative, and it marks the beginning of a new working hypothesis. Right now, scientifically speaking, we know next to nothing about the core structure of the Great Pyramid, but I now firmly believe that before we look at any pyramid anomaly, and try and give a fair explanation, whether the air channels, the newly discovered North Face Corridor or the unopened Big Void, we must take into account the fact the pyramid has a stepped core hiding inside it, just like all the pyramids of the 4th dynasty. It was the first and main phase in the pyramid's construction, and I think it's the key to understanding most things that many consider to be a mystery including the subject of this video, 
The Strange Anomalies, recorded by Rudolf Gantenbrink in the King's Chamber Air Channels. Now, we don't know what the inner stepped core looked like exactly. Right now, it's all pretty much guesswork. But as this diagram crudely shows, the King's Chamber air channels would have had to have been extended from the step core through the backing stones and then exiting the casing stones. This could potentially be some risky work because one misalignment or slump in the backing stones would mean the channels won't work. The ancient Egyptians would have known this, and in the 1990s, Rudolf Gantenbrink noted something very specific in the King's Chamber Northern Air Channel. High up inside the channel, one channel block measures 4.37 meters in length. It's about twice as long as any other block, and that's in all four pyramid air channels. But why? I would suggest the reason for the long block is because this is where you leave the pyramid core into the backing stones. This is the point of the pyramid's extension, when it went from phase 1 to phase 2, from step core structure to true pyramid. And so, I suggest an extra long block was deemed necessary at this point, to give the structure of the air channel added stability. We don't see the same long block in the southern air channel, but we do get a very clear indication of where the end of the step core is. Inside the King's Chamber Southern Air Channel, between blocks 15 and 16, there is a very peculiar joint, and it's different to every other joint in all the four air channels. This vertical joint is found going through both the roof and floor blocks of the channel. Such joints have a distinct static function. According to Gantenbrink, it is a complete anomaly to find a vertical joint fully isolated in the nucleus of the pyramid, because it requires much greater effort to shape and fit the block in such an arrangement. Gantenbrink remarks that the builders must have had significant structural justification for going to the trouble of deflecting forces into the horizontal plane at this location. It's the only vertical joint in the entire channel, adding stability to the channel at this specific point. And I believe this is because we're looking at the edge of the Great Pyramid's step core. The vertical joint was added to lower the stress at this specific transition point where the step core ends and the backing stones begin. Alternatively, Maybe a more simpler explanation is that we have a vertical joint because we've reached the vertical face of a step. Interestingly, after the vertical joint, the King's Chamber southern channel is seen to bend towards the east. Maybe another indication we've passed the step core transition zone. What I mean is, the bend section is the new section of the channel that was built into the later backing stones long after the core was complete. Why the same method of structural support was not used in both channels I don't know. Maybe one method was used originally for both, and in one channel it could have failed. Alternatively, like I said, maybe the vertical joint is just the edge of the step core, and no extra precautions were taken. Whatever the reason, at these two places in the King's Chamber air channels, we do find very specific anomalies, and both of them strengthen their respective channel. I do believe my explanation for the anomalies in the two air channels is logical and makes sense, and so I think they can actually help us to crudely map the inner step core of the pyramid. Yes, it's still guesswork in many ways, but I do strongly believe that these four data points mark here, the ends of the Queen's Chamber air channels and the two anomalies in the Kings, mark the inner step core of the Great Pyramid. Of course, right now there really isn't enough information to envision exactly what it looks like from just four data points, but we have to start somewhere, and this is as good a place as any. So, in summary, 
the dead ends of the Queen's Chamber Air Channels, together with some strange anomalies in the King's Chamber Air Channels, could well be showing us the edge of the stepped inner core of the Great Pyramid. To build on this, in my next video I'll be having a closer look at the two new Great Pyramid discoveries, the North Face Corridor and also the Big Void, to see if they can help us build a clearer picture of the Great Pyramid's hidden inner core. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.